Hello again everyone from Tokyo Japan and welcome back to Japan Vintage Camera. I hadn't actually planned to make a camera video today. Uh, I had planned to go out and do some cycling around the park. Uh, but unfortunately uh, we're kind of in the change of seasons right now and rather than the, the nice morning I expected it turns out to be a little bit cold and rainy. So I figured this would be a good opportunity to just stay indoors and make what I hope is an interesting camera video. Uh, the camera I'm going to be talking about today is the Minolta X70, which is also known as the Minolta XGM in most other places. For those of you who are new to my channel, I sell vintage Japanese cameras like this one here in my online store, japanvintagecamera.com. I have an Etsy store, which is also called Japan Vintage Camera. So if you'd like to buy this camera or another vintage Japanese camera, please visit one of my stores. I'll post links to my stores in the description below the video. Uh, for those of you who might be interested, um, my Japan Vintage Camera uh, store, I offer lower prices than in my Etsy store because I don't have to pay uh, fees for things which I sell in my own store. So uh, if you want a camera for a better price, please visit my uh, japanvintagecamera.com store. And if there are things that you don't see there which are listed on my Etsy store, please let me know and I can make you a, a, an offer with a discount. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, the Minolta X70 or XGM was released around 1980, 1981 or 82 here in Japan. Uh, this was during uh, a really big boom in uh, SLR photography during that period. Uh, SLRs had really caught on and had a kind of knocked rangefinder uh, cameras uh, you know, off the pedestal and uh, were, were very, very popular. They were popular in the movies, in, uh, in the print media, and on television, and everyone wanted one, and uh, Japanese camera manufacturers obliged by producing a huge variety of different models. By 1980, the technology for these cameras had become quite mature. Uh, they were very reliable and very well made, uh, more so than they had been in previous times. Uh, the electronically controlled shutters were now much more reliable and much more accurate. Uh, the metering systems were uh, uh, more adaptable and uh, worked much better. And uh, and also, uh, you know, the 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 quality of optics and glass was quite high when uh, these cameras were made. So you know, despite the fact that this camera was made, uh, what, 43 years ago, uh, it remains a very useful tool today and can capture really high quality images. Now, uh, Minolta's uh, X XGM or X7, I'm probably gonna get these mixed up a little bit, so uh, uh, cut me some slack if I do. Uh, was one of the better quality examples here. If I compare this to uh, some of the other uh, uh, cameras which were released on the market at that time, I kind of like the feel and the operating system of this camera a little bit better than say to cameras like the, the Minolta AE-1. Uh, it, it, this camera just has a really good build and uh, balance and not too light despite the fact that it's not made of the, the, the you know the solid metals which some of the other cameras were made of. Uh, it, it's, it's a really well thought out camera, well arranged and quite easy to use. So let's go ahead and take a look at the features, controls, and functions of the X70 or XGM, depending on which one you happen to be holding uh, from the top. Uh, the first thing we have here, where I usually start, is the film rewind knob, uh, very similar to the other Minolta's, and has a convenient arrow to tell you which way to turn it. This also doubles as the uh, catch for opening the rear film door, so simply pull it upward like so and the door opens, push it back downward when uh, you want to close the door. Below that we have the dial where you set your film speed. There's a little window here where my finger is pointing and to set the film speed you lift up on this black ring and turn it until the number in the dial matches the speed of the film you have loaded in the camera. We also have an exposure compensation <coughs> system here, which makes it very uh, convenient when you're using this uh, camera in tricky lighting uh, situations. For example, you're shooting someone who's uh, skiing in the snow and you want them to come out white instead of gray. <coughs> you can uh, increase the exposure. Or if you want to take a photograph of something which is black and you want it to look black and not gray, uh, you can decrease the exposure. And to do that, you simply push down on the black button and Turn the dial and you have two stops of exposure uh, compensation either way. And uh, this also works quite well when you are uh, using a more modern digital camera. They usually have exposure compensation or, or a way that you can raise or increase or decrease the ISO. 
Here we have a uh, shoe for mounting a flash. You can use any hot flash on this camera. You can also use a cable flash. There's a socket for attaching a uh, PC flash sync socket. If you use an original Minolta flash, you get automatic flash operation and also a flash indicator inside the viewfinder. Uh, over to the right side here, we have uh, the shutter speed dial and this camera offers a uh, full manual or aperture priority automatic operation and there's a power switch here where you can turn the camera off or on and of course we have the uh, film winding and shutter charging lever and we have the film counter located here on the back of the camera we have the viewfinder eyepiece which is nice and large and uh, offers you a really uh, bright field of view. It's slotted on either side. You can attach either an eye cup or a diopter adjustment lens so you can make it a little bit easier to focus without glasses. Uh, on the bottom here we have a holder for putting in a uh, film box card, the top to the card, so you can uh, be reminded what kind of film you have loaded inside. These numbers back here are a <clears throat> DIN uh, ASA conversion chart, which um, uh, was obsolete long before this camera was made, but they, you know, in Japan they still like to put these things in here. Uh, on the bottom here we have the <clears throat> battery cover and this camera uses ordinary uh, LR44 batteries <clears throat> or SR44 batteries. And this camera also accepts a power winder which can give you up to 2 frames per second of uh, power winding. On the front of the camera we don't have too much here. We have uh, uh, the re lens release button which allows you to dismount and remount the lens. We have a depth of field uh, preview lever, which allows you to stop down uh, the aperture. You can probably see the aperture blades moving and allow you to see how much uh, a depth of field you have, uh, uh, you know, just by looking through the uh, viewfinder. And also uh, uh, self timer mode, and which is kind of an audible self timer and also a convenient grip here on the side. Uh, this camera accepts uh, a large variety of lenses. Uh, this one is fitted right now with an MC Rokor lens, which is kind of a slightly earlier lens. You can also use the uh, MD Rokor lenses. Uh, these lenses are really easy to find. They're not expensive and you can get anything from uh, fisheye lenses to uh, long telephotos. Uh, personally, I kind of, like most people who are into film photography, the, the more simple uh, either prime lenses or wide angle lenses which allow the camera to be uh, quite uh, easily held. Uh, some people back in the day when uh, these cameras were more popular, I preferred to use zoom lenses. I found them more flexible and honestly speaking, it's really hard to tell the difference between uh, an image captured with a zoom lens as opposed to a prime lens. Uh, most people can't really tell. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, they are a little bit bigger and a little bit heavier and a little bit harder to use. The viewfinder system in this camera is pretty interesting. Uh, on the right side, it uses an LED match kind of system, whereas you are moving, uh, if you're shooting in the automatic mode, or you know, as you move the aperture up and down, you will see the LEDs move up, up and down and showing you it, um, which uh, uh, shutter speed the camera is going to select. And if you're using it in the manual mode, you can uh, still use the system and uh, you know it will recommend uh, what the, the, the correct shutter speed for whatever aperture you are having uh, or you are deciding to use. And that's kind of an improvement over the earlier camera where if you used it in manual mode, it would disable the shutter. Uh, this camera is a very good uh, camera for anyone who is interested in a very simple and easy to use SLR camera. Uh, the metering in this camera is very uh, accurate and will always give you very good exposures uh, even if you're using a, you know, a slide films. Uh, the electronically controlled shutter works very well. It's always spot on and will always give you accurate exposures. I really like the Minolta lenses. Uh, there are some favorites which I have. I really love the old uh, 58mm f1.2 uh, lens. That one is one of the, the best of the large aperture lenses which I've uh, tried. Uh, it, it, it works pretty well on this camera and yeah, uh, yeah there, there's not really much bad I can say about this camera. I don't get a whole lot of these old Minoltas. And I don't find a lot in the in the way of weaknesses. Uh, actually, though, um, you know, I, I've come across quite a few of these. I haven't yet found one which doesn't work. And pretty much what all I have to do is clean the battery contacts and put a battery inside, and uh, the camera will start working. I, I really, you know, love how well made these cameras were. Things that you do have to worry, worry about with these cameras a bit are things like um, a dust or haze which gets inside the viewfinder or fungus. 
the problem with these cameras uh, compared to the earlier, more expensive cameras is a little bit harder to take apart and solve problems in. Uh, fortunately, this camera here is made a little bit more easy to disassemble and clean than the uh, than its, I guess, brethren. I've had a lot of troubles with, you know, like trying to take apart and clean cameras like the Canon AE-1. It's very difficult to, uh, like, clean the fungus or issues with the prism and such. It's more easier on the Minolta cameras. Uh, but uh, that said, uh, the wonderful thing about these, they're well made and well sealed, and I seldom find myself having to actually uh, take them apart or do anything to them. But anyway, uh, that's my uh, video review of this camera. Maybe quickly I'll show you how to load the film before I end, end this. Uh, you simply pop open the film door, you will drop your film cartridge here and push uh, the rewind knob back down to lock it in place. Pull the film leader across and feed it into the take-up spool and simply push it this way. And not only does the take-up spool turn, but the take-up sprocket turns as well. And simply pull it across until the holes on the top and bottom of the film are being caught by the take-up sprocket. Then simply close the door and wind to number one and the camera is good to go. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. If you'd like to see more videos, please subscribe. If you like the video, please click the like button. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you tune in again soon.